test. Right now that everybody's here, welcome to the quarterfinals of NUDC 2023. In this debate, we will have Sam Ratulangi as opening government, Gajah Mada as opening opposition, Pence as closing government, and Kristen Indonesia as closing opposition. Will be Devi Sasabila, which will please raise your hands. Yeah, just introduce yourself to the room. Uh, Dia Anissa, Manda Bagaskara, and Stanley Marco Effendi. Um, short housekeeping before we start this room will be live streamed so for audiences please do not go in and out of the room unless there will there is an emergency advice to just stay here till the end of this debate and for debaters please use the mic when you speak pois are also to be offered with a mic so if there's going to be a change of position i would like to ask the lo to just move the mic to the other position so they can ask their pois with that being said let's not wait any longer i would like to Welcome the Prime Minister to start the debate here, here. Um, am I audible? Okay. Panelists, Africa is a continent consisting abundant resources to be explored, and has the potential to improve in their trade with the in their trade with um, with the resources that with the abundant resources that they have, and with the different geographical um, and with different geographical. Uh, Geographic and with different geographical areas, mountains, deserts, and also forests, it's uh, it's it because it makes it more difficult for their goods to actually move around and to trade smoother. And with priorities at hand with their uh, with with each of their countries, in the end, this potential is not going is not uh, is not uh, this potential of their resources is not used to be uh, is not used as well as uh, is not used as as um, as good. And in the end, uh, with and in the end, with um, ca causing less trade to actually go around. So moving on to our setup is that we do not want the free trade, we do not want the African free trade area, but instead we prefer where they are open to work together with other countries, a trade that uh, with open to other countries outside the African trade, for example, like the U.S., with a more stable economy. Why is that so? Because we know that each country in Africa is dealing with their own, uh, is dealing with their own, with also their own priorities and their country problems. Which, in the end, even if they're going to explore their abundant resources in order to actually do trades, uh, do better trades, it's not going to be possible due to uh, due, due to their own priorities. Moving on to my argument about why is it uh, about why is it not why but why about why the free trade itself is not is not a is not a good idea why the free trade itself is not a good idea to a more stable economy. First, as I have characterized earlier, places in Africa has geographical, ha, is, is abundant in their geograph is different and have various geogra and have various geographical places. For example, they have deserts, they have uh, places with deserts, they have places with mountains, forests, and everything. And, it's, and in the end, all trade has, uh, how is all trade going to be done? It's not possible to do and to distribute all the goods through land because in the end, the trade all have to be done through air or for example, airplanes. In the end, this is not going to be something efficient and trade is going to be something very difficult because it's not going to move through. Uh, because uh, trade is going to be something very difficult to be done. Why? Because all everything has to be done through everything has to be done through air, which in the end is the on, is one of the only solutions to be able to move trade around smoothly, uh, which causes to a higher prices of goods. Why is that so? Because a more ex it's going to be a more expensive fee to transfer goods and difficult as it is because the only way to actually do that is through uh, is through. Uh, is through air, and which in the end is going to cause high demand from that for all goods to be transferred through that because that's the only option. And the states don't have the incentives to actually help those people. Uh, the states don't have to have the incentives to help those people, and even if they do, do not have the capacity or even the capability to do it. Why is that so? Because as I have characterized earlier, these people have their, these countries have their own, uh, these countries have their own. They, these countries have their own priorities to deal with, to deal with poverty, to deal with hunger and everything. Even they need some investment from other countries in order to help them, and it's not in a capability to actually bring. To actually, it's not in a 
and the capacity or even the capability to be actually prioritizing, prioritizing trade, prioritizing, prioritizing trade, and to be able to help each other with um, uh, to help each other with trading goods. Because in the end, they also have their own priorities. They're dealing with uh, in the end, they also have their own priorities, and is dealing with different is dealing with different problems in their own country, which is why this trade is a bad solution as, as it's going to cost to a higher prices of good and it's not a good strategy. In comparison to our side of the house, when trading with, for example, the US, they have an agreement with the US and the US is investing on Africa. In the end, they have the incentives to make price cheaper. What kind of investment are they doing is because, as I have talked about earlier, is how Africa has their own resources. And in the end, because this, uh, in the end, US has their own incentive to actually help because in order to act, uh, because in order for their own for the US to have their uh, to have the ex to have their own exports to have their own production to be done stably they are re highly reliant on the on these countries in Africa for their abundant resources they're highly reliant on them so in the end if these uh, if something actually happens in the country the US has no choice but to actually help these people to actually help these countries to actually help these countries in order to have their own st uh, in order to reach a stability in their own country because if the country is not stable in the end how are they going to produce how are they going to move their own resources Resources and how are they going to uh, help? And <clears throat> and in the end, it's going to. And in the end, the U.S. is going to be highly reliant, which is why it's an incentive for them to actually help the African countries, uh, to, to help the African countries. They have incentive to help moving with their goods across their geographically disadvantaged areas and other uh, geographic uh, disadvantaged areas. Other countries investing in Africa. Uh, other countries investing in Africa, and in so we support the other countries investing in Africa. Trade will be able to be done more smoother with other countries having more knowledge, uh, having more not with other countries having more knowledge, more money to actually do it, and also having the incentives to do it due to their abundant resources. It's going to be a fair, pragmatic agreement, uh, last uh, uh, with uh, agreement, and with Africa having other priorities, they will not be able, they will not be able to maximally do it, which is why we believe on our side of the house, we will be able to maximally do it better, because with the agreement with other countries that is more capable, that, is, that has the priority, that actually has the priority to actually do trade, instead of actually, look, because their country is already economically stable, their country already, ha their country is already economically stable, and they do not have the priority to actually improve their country yet, uh, to improve their country, which is why they have the incentive to actually go outside and do trade with other countries, comparison with Africa, who still has lots of internal problems to actually deal with, to deal with their government, to deal with their, uh, to deal, to deal with their poverty and everything. Which is why uh, we believe that other countries have more in, uh, have more incentive to help Africa, which in the end will lead to a stable, con to a sta more stable economy. Why? Because with more trade, it leads to more goods being sold. With more goods being sold and being smoother, it's going, uh, with more goods being sold, uh, then it's uh, then the, then when the goods actually move around, it's going to be cheaper with higher GDP and in the end cause a stable economy, which is why we we proudly propose. Thank you. We thank the Prime Minister for their speech. Uh, a reminder that POIs are highly encouraged in this format. Now we'd like to welcome the Leader of Opposition to start their case. Here, here. Okay. Uh, POI, raise your hand. We'll probably accept one from closing government exclusively. Maybe at fifth. Uh, before fifth, don't raise your hand. I'll not accept any POI. Starting my speech in three, two, one. 
OO will prove that as imperfect as status quo is, the world with AFCTA is preferable. I think the BOP of opposition is not to prove that AFCFTA is ideal or functioning really well to the extent that it's perfect, but that a world without it is much, much worse than status quo, right? So two important setup before moving on to my contribution. Number one, AFCTA is a free trade area exclusively for African nation. What does it mean? It means that for African nations with, that joins this free trade area, for them to trade together their resources together, there will be little, you know, there will be no tariff at all imposed their goods, for example, meaning that they will have cheaper goods if they want to import it from other nations, for example. So if you, if, you know, if those African nations have, the, you know, the needs that need to be fulfilled by other nations, good, they can do it cheaply, for example. But secondly, understand that having regional free trade is not mutually exclusive with international cooperation. That's why EU or WTO member can still engage to international trade anyway, because there's no clauses in, you know, free trade agreement that enforce you to only stay in that free trade area and doesn't engage in any other international cooperation whatsoever. I think the concern of opening government is truly invalid in this debate. Two arguments in my speech. Number one, why FTA is good for African nations' well-being. But number two, diffusing tension. Firstly then, why FTA is good for African nation well-being? The end goal of this debate is to ensure that well-being of African nation is ensured, right? I'll prove to you why free trade area is good for African nations' development and well-being as a whole. Three structural reasons to this. One, understand that the, con the context on how diverse African nations in terms of resources are. How mainly the region is split into two types of biome, you know, Saharan desert in the north, for example, and savanna with more greenery predominantly on the south, for example. Or how vast majority of African nations are landlocked in the continent, and there, you know, there are some places that can access resource, you know, sea or, you know, uh, natural resources in the sea, for example. This means that the type of resources in each nation varies a lot in Africa. E.g., some have an abundance amount of minerals or oil, for example, but lack in water or agriculture. E.g., this is what happens to Congo because it's landlocked, for example. This is called niche comparative advantage, when one country only have, you know, have resources that the other doesn't have or vice versa. The idea of trade in and of itself, is to utilize comparative advantage, right? To fulfill each other's needs effectively by trading, you know, their, their own comparative advantage. So at the end of the day, every nation has their needs fulfilled. This engage with OG's concern on how hunger will be solved in our South Dallas. Exactly, when landlocked Asian, when landlocked African nations that doesn't have good agriculture, for example, have the access to freely trade agriculture goods from other na African nations, I think they will solve their hunger problems in our side of the house. But secondly, second uh, you know, reasons why this is good is because you, African nation is close in proximity with each other. Exactly because you are so close with each other, I think, uh, uh, I think your main trading partner will be fellow African nation inside the continent. Why? Because they are close in proximity. Because if you trade with other countries that are close in proximity with your nation, I think you will, you will have cheaper logistics because you don't have to travel much distance Point. to distribute your goods, for example, later, don't uh, use your make, uh, to distribute your goods, for example, <laughs> means that your goods will be cheaper, meaning, meaning that goods that you trade will be cheaper. This is exactly what happens in ASEAN, for example, when they establish MEA to trade between Southeast Asian nations. They establish this because they know that uh, you know, fellow Southeast Asian nations are do their main trading partner because they can fulfill their comparative advantage and it's very cheap for them logistically to trade with each other, for example. But thirdly, I think the bargaining power between country is relatively the same because every African nation share the same trade. That is, they are, you know, all of them are developing uh, a, the developing economy, the, all of them are developing democracy, for example. This is good, because for you to have a successful international agreement, I think you need to have power balance between every nation's right. Because if that's not the case, I think you'll only have exploitation. This is what happens when, you know, with China's presence in African, for example, when they, you, you know, really uh, utilize African nations' resources to their utmost interest and leave a lot of African nations in jeopardy, like South Africa, for example. The comparative is worse in the South House. Three reasons. One, I think you'll have to set up bilateral treaty with each nation in Africa, or maybe no trade agreement at all, uh, with, uh, if you want to trade 
uh, inside the continent, right? This is exactly worse because you don't have mechanism like free, you know, tariff free trade that makes goods more cheaper if you want to trade with each other, right? That's why I think if you, the concern of OG is the fulfillment of resources, it's much worse in the South Dos when you don't have free trade agreement within African nation to begin with. But secondly, I think trading with other nations outside of Africa is much more costly. If trading in Africa is done through air and OG told you that it's expensive, sure, probably trading to China also need air and it's much more expensive because it's much more distance, right? I question why then, you know, trading with other nations like what OG posit would be much more cheaper anyway in the rest of the house. Thirdly, I think there will be power imbalance because outside of Africa, probably the nations are much more developed. This looks like China, for example. This looks like USA, for example. When you have power imbalance, I think those nations will only utilize your country's resources to their utmost interest. If OG want economic stability, I think this is, you know, our analysis is the, is the a priori analysis to their, uh, you know, goal, right? Because stability will be fulfilled if you have sufficient resources that can fulfill the demand of your uh, citizens, for example, and this exists when you have free trade uh, agreement within African nation. Good. Secondly, the, on diffusing tension, understand how African conflict are mostly driven by resources. Scarcity, e.g. conflict in Congo, for instance, where they lack resources like water, for example, which is very basic uh, and it driven a lot of conflict within the area. When you have this free trade area, I think it will diffuse tension under two reasons. One, because the, mo the main reasons for them to go to war, which is lack of scarcity, will be softened, right? Because they have this mechanism for them to trade effectively with other African nations, for example, meaning that there's, you know, there is no longer a need for them to, uh, uh, to you know, try to get resources with uh, go -go -go, uh, very violent ways, for, for example. But secondly, I think this will also diffuse tension Exactly, because every nation are tied together within this free trade agreement. In free trade agreement, you need cooperation for it to work perfectly. If other nations within the agreement are battling each other, I think the, you know, I think the benefit that you'll get will be menial, exactly because it's sex, exactly because you, know, you are conflicting each other in the free trade agreement. Yeah, it's just intuitive how the uh, agreement benefit, all of, all of the agreement benefit that I've told you before will be nullified if they uh, yeah, engage in war, for example. That's why we, our, side, uh, our side's agreement will, uh, yeah, will nullify the effect of tension in Africa. Proud to propose. Oppose. Thank you, Leader of Opposition, for the speech. Again, a reminder that POI is highly encouraged, but please listen to the ding so that you don't offer POIs after the protected time. Right, we would like to welcome Deputy Prime Minister to continue the case of the government. Here, here. Check, check. Am I audible? Up your eye non verbally, so just stand up and raise your hands, not necessarily giving any noise. I'll try to prioritize closing 
for crossbench engagement. Starting my speech. Opening opposition cannot run from this debate by just arguing that this is going to work effectively. Why so? Because all their ending analysis about how they're resolving conflict and how they're resolving economic crisis in certain areas of Africa is highly reliant on how successful this is going to be on their side of the house. This is something I'm missing because at the end of the day, all their analysis on the leader of opposition is only arguing the after product of economic of yeah, of this trade, free trade, not necessarily debunking the process analysis on why this is likely to be successful. Three points of analysis on opening government. First, under our side, my PM characterized to you how the alternative on our side is that not only necessarily working with other states of South Africa, but it also includes bilateral trade, for example, whatsoever. Not necessarily needs to include a specific free trade organization, for example. That is suggesting, I don't see why on, our, on their side of the house, if the scarcity and different condition of each country, for example, is being the problem, why is it unresolvable on our side of the house? Second, under the concept of cheap price, for example, I don't think you should buy this fake metal judge. Why so? Because number one, Geographically, they are super far away. Like Africa is one of the biggest continent, second probably, uh, I don't know, like uh, one of the biggest continent in, in the world, for instance. That is suggesting going from the east to the west Africa is the same, is taking the same, for example, distance no, uh, from China, for example, to the west Africa in that sense due to how far the geographical condition. Not to mention desert, mountain, sit to uh, unsolvable streets, for example, unwalkable streets whatsoever that makes the, infra the, yeah, the absence of infrastructure that makes it even harder, for example, for it to access this uh, delivery of goods whatsoever. Second, the absence of resources. I think what makes US or China different to the other African states is the availability in order to deliver those things. Not all, not all states have enough, for example, helicopter to deliver those goods. Not all African states have enough airplane or probably even airport, for example, to have those things, for example. This is what makes the cost even, even higher because in order for each country to have an export import with each other, like in a whole trade, in a whole like African, uh, African country, for example, you need to purchase those things first that result into even to more higher prices, for example, of the product whatsoever. Third, about the idea of conflict. I think this is hilarious because their mechanism about resolving conflicts is highly relying on how effective and how successful is it likely to be for this trade to work on our side of the house. That is suggesting the prerequisite of their benefit to run is through my PM's argument, no response. Not to mention, I think in order to ensure this idea of resolving conflict exists, in order to ensure, for example, yeah, their trade trade or organization working, for example, you need to resolve conflict. Why so? Because in the middle of the uh, trade organization, you will have a lot of interaction with these people or with this uh, state that you hate, for example, this is suggesting in order the product, the resolving conflict is not the product of free trade organization, it's the prerequisite of a successful free trade organization, something that they need to defend. I'm going to do three things here. Number one, talking about the taxation, the how trade is really, how free market, for example, is not something that's suitable for African countries. Second, I'll talk about attracting investor, which is the likelihood of the success in order for opening opposition argument to run. Finally, about worst case, about our benefit that being bilateral for example. First, about the idea of free, uh, why, free, uh, why, yeah, why free market is not a suitable uh, uh, form of market for African country. The premise of this argument is that how trade organization is going to urge you for internal free market. This is including the erasement of tax between in a, a member, for example, in terms of export and import, meaning you have a, a lower tax revenue, for example. Second, this also means the lower losing barriers and economic protectionism to your local products whatsoever. This is a basic economical context that they need, they, I think, opening up opportunity for gas. But why are they so important? Number one, tax is important for African states in order to have an internal development. Building infrastructure that's going to make, e like for example, street easier for you to have a business bilaterally with other countries, for example, next to you. Or for example, supporting SMEs, their local business whatsoever, for example, which is also going to impact your local banks, for example, and strengthen your country economically. The problem is that because of minimal incentive to hold all these countries with no deficit or tax benefit, for example, because in order for you to do that because you have a lower tax benefit, I think it's going to be even harder on their side to, con uh, to conduct a trade with each other. Second, competitive market. Now, thank you. About the idea of basic economic argument, I think the problem with the current status quo is that how products of African country are normally similar. With, I'm talking about the natural resources that normally are similar. I'm talking about the cultural product usually being the form of like, yeah, product of SMEs, for example, whatsoever. It's also quite similar. That is suggesting it's more likely to be highly competitive. They're going to kill your own local products at the end of the day that we think is, uh, that we think is uh, 
yeah, it's unstrategic. What does it mean? It result into number one, economic instability due to the less revenue. This is going to hamper all the local competitive market. I think it's going to impact your GDP as a whole, going to impact your revenue as a whole, and going to impact your tax uh, benefit as a whole. Second, about the idea of ec bad economic improvement. I think this is going to even worsen the conflict at the end of the day. The primary reason, I'm going to take you later, um, the primary reason for this to happen is because it's more likely to fail, for example, with the low revenue, for example. Would I suggest, uh, why so? Because in order for you, uh, in order for you to create a successful market or in a successful organization, you need to make sure all countries are working together. With no mechanization on how they are going to work together, I think it's going to be harder for you, for instance, to create, for example, because of internal conflict that happened in history. Before going to my second case, yeah. Yeah, and the prerequisite of you have cheap trades is when you make sure you have accessibility to do that. First, uh, second idea, I'm going to argue about attracting investor. First thing to note, I think there's the problem with or trade organization is that they want to achieve economic independence. We need to say you want to, for example, get away from any other barriers that probably going to likely, that's uh, okay, like to happen. That's why we have ASEAN in order to minimize our reliance to US and China, for example. That's why ASEAN, for example, or, or I don't know, OPEC access in order to uh, minimize the reliance to global, uh, global oil for instance, this is suggesting that this is not going, that their, their side cannot cop our benefit at the end of the day in order to attract an investor. Because in order to attract an investor, you need a specific level of independence and open to the market, for example. But when you have a free trade organization, you're more likely to be tied with, especially with an, another trade, for example. Because, in, because your decision with cooperating with certain country is going to impact your economic, that's going to probably impact the whole other country that's related into that organization, for example. But second, of all, even though investor might come, I think at the cause of it, I think number one, states are already dealing with higher barriers. Because in order for investor to come on their side of the house, they need to make sure they have stability. I proved you on five structural reasons before on how it's not going to be likely on our side of the house. But what does it mean then on do you judge? Num at best, there, no matter how good South, uh, their products can be, their organization can be, it's going to be high chance of stability. Because the good country that on their side only exists is only South Africa, for example. Now, that is suggesting, number one, investor is more likely to come on our side of the house because each country has not burden of each other whatsoever. And finally, about how we protect more bilateral business, for example, we think we cop their benefit, proud to propose. Test, test, am I audible? Test, test, am I audible? Test, audible, yeah. Um, disclaimer, I honestly don't know a lot about Africa, so if I mischaracterize some cultures, some conditions on the ground, I'm so sorry. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna start my speech in three, two, one. 
The colonial rule of Britain, Spain, and France have split the African continent to arbitrary border that puts every African nation in an awkward position where they are cursed. In a sense that in status quo, some have really lucrative resources, like Congo have a lot of nickel or Sudanese have a lot of gold, but at the same time, they lack a lot of other essential things. Both of these nations, for example, lacks arable land, lacks water or fisheries and whatnot. This awkward position was probably intentional because the colonizers want to use it as a defide at infra to put these nations to war so that they can re-rule the region or probably it's unintentional because they are stupid and don't understand the natural geographic and resource distribution. Therefore, I posit that in the absence of this free trade area, it is not realistically possible for a lot of African nations to procure essential consumer goods, for example, grain, energy, or livestock, because a lot of Asia, uh, African nations are probably does not have access to arable land, given Sahara Desert is very fast and covers a lot of region, or probably a lot of them can't get key resources to operate the economy, i.e. for Sudan, probably it's hard for them to procure mercury, which does not occur naturally in, the, in their border, but is very essential for their gold extraction business. In and of itself, I think African free trade area allows a lot of these countries to fill each other's shortcoming. That itself is already a big benefit for tourism. Sadwika told you, firstly, African nations will get resources that they lack but they need, meaning at the very least, less people are hungry, more economy can do what they need to do because they can get the resource that they need to, uh, uh, you know, and whatnot. But Point. the second thing is that I posit this have other trickle down benefits. For example, diffusing tensions or potential future conflicts because understand that a lot of African wars, for example, and yeah, genocide or other forms of atrocity, for example, Rwanda, Sudanese conflict, all of them are rooted in resource, um, resource disparity and whatnot. It's already a big benefit, never engaged by, um, you know, governments have the house. Before that, POI. Why do you think that your, uh, your resources is going to be distributed equally? Mean, meanwhile, there, there, there is a, a richer country and the other one is yeah, more sure. it's poor? Exactly, because it's not distributed equally. You exactly need a channel for these countries to be able to send these goods to each other very efficiently. Because understand that if you want to ship like from Congo to Sudan, you have to go through a lot of nations, which often, uh, in the absence of this free trade area, is quite impossible. Cool. What are the alternatives of African continent free, uh, free trade area that African states can use to procure resources and why they are worse in comparison? Opening government wants USA. I don't think that's reliable or viable for a lot of reasons. Firstly, understand that they have a lot of geopolitical goals and local enemy in Africa. They oppose Sudanese paramilitary and have terrible precedents or beef with African nations, for example, Libya, Congo, and a lot of other things. So I posit, I, me and Satwika posit that it will more likely be China because of their lack of human rights standards. They don't care if you shoot your citizen or they are currently expanding hard and can provide almost everything African nation needs. For example, food, probably because they have the biggest stockpile of green and soy and cheap electronic machinery and infrastructure. But I think China is toxic for two reasons. Firstly, they have the tendency and precedence of predatory behavior. Look at BRI, Sri Lanka, debt trap, exploitative extraction of resource in Congo, the reuse of child labor, and a lot of other things to, that I cannot name. It's too, the list is too long. But secondly, I posit that China is not proximate with Africa. In a sense, they do not share border or any relatability. Hence, destruction of local economy, environment, or politics will not affect them. This is why it's very easy for Chinese government to do terrible things, for example, dumping, uh, uh, dumping or doing ter terrible exploitation with no regards to local environment and whatnot. But I posit as well, even, yeah, at best case scenario, I think USA and China is much more, is further, for example, in proximity, hence transporting them, yeah, especially like through air, it's very expensive, right, in comparison to through land by train or even by car and whatnot. Therefore, Exactly, the existence of African free trade area is beneficial because we give choices that are less exploitative, which are other FTA members. This will answer to their you know, uh, question, will this be effective? Um, the answer is simple. If you're African nation that is belong to this free trade area, it's very likely that you will want to cooperate with each other because probably the other party have what you need and you would need that thing sustainably. Hence, you are more likely to be, you know, willing to make concession, willing to make um, good, uh, you know, 
uh, transaction and whatnot. But secondly, I posit that they have inherent relatability and proximity with each other. Probably they are, they feel like fellow brothers in war with colonialism, or probably like they, um, you know, understand that if I, this, you know, if I do something that impacts other nations badly. I will probably get the impact. For example, when when uh, uh, Sudan destroys Congo economy, probably there will be war that might spill over to their nation and whatnot. Right? Hence, exactly. If we're uh, exactly, I think the free trade area will work very well because there are a lot of incentives, be it emotional, be it pragmatic, for the member states to cooperate really well. But. Sure, it might not be enough, and we might still need foreign actors to supply us because probably not everything can be provided. At the very least, we have several things. Firstly, the negotiation be between us and China will not, it will not be bilateral, right? It will be African continent versus China, which means we will have more aggregate political power, aggregate resource and market. Hence, we can set better and higher demand or standard. But furthermore, exactly like when we have bigger market, bigger population, everything, but not, I think exactly investment and whatnot will be much more lucrative for a lot of uh, foreign investors. Hence, I don't understand like the harm of like of investor and whatnot. Cool. Let's engage their case. First of all, what you need to understand, just because Africa have a free trade area does not mean African nation can trade with other actors, for example, USA or China or other bloc like EU. If the resource sold by foreign actor is indeed cheaper, they have the choice. But comparatively, it's hard for, to get resource from fellow African free trade area member in the absence of this three free trade area, because you have to make multiple bilateral deals that as Satwika have proven to be inefficient and hard. For, uh, it's also very hard to transport, right? If you want to send resource from Congo to Djibouti, you have to pass a lot of nation in status without this free trade area, it's very unlikely that it will be able to be feasible. But the second thing is that what you need to understand is that the argument against free market is invalid. First of all, I think protectionism and whatnot is only bad when the other actor have the t tendency or have the interest to destroy you. I posit that this is not the case because of my previous analysis in, re in regards to, you know, Africa, African nations are less likely to be hostile to each other and will more likely want to support each other. But furthermore, like, yeah, exactly when you have, you know, other choices to trade with, for example, other fellow African nation, you do not have to cooperate with China and whatnot, which are the ones that does dumping or the terrible things that Aldo told you post. Um, firstly, am I audible? Um, just to clarify, before I start my speech, um, uh, you know, it's been an amazing experience for me, basically, because I'm still a novice. But it turns out I becoming the quarterfinal, so it's very an amazing experience so far. So, um, if this turns out at the end of the day when uh, pens are not advancing, I already happy enough because this is already great achievements. Um, BY preference, just stand up, prefer a crossing branch, uh, bench. All right, I start my speech in three, two, um, in three, two, and one. Panels, I think what's missing from the entire debate so far is that um, the actors within the debate in itself, which then, who are this house is, and why do we want to regret it, and yeah, how are the establishment are actually going to look like, those are the things that are missing from the entire debate so far, so that's why, as a CG right now, I'm going to explain and filling that gap. So firstly is that when it comes into um, who are the actors, simply is that those are the people within that country, for example, why then uh, they regret this establishment of the African, which I would explain later in my arguments. Um, so yeah, 
I think that's it uh, for the internal clarification. Um, also, we do not want to limit the, uh, our stand is simply um, not having a stance. We just do not want to limit this uh, free trade market. We open into an international market, for example, and etc. right? So as simple as that, as the uh, SEC. Now, um, yeah, so what I'm going to explain to you is that um, why then uh, in a status quo it's very not justified in terms of two different contexts and secondly um, why then this would hurt even more the, um, uh, the Africans in overall. But before that I think there is uh, rebuttals uh, specifically towards the opposition side of the house. Um, simply um, uh, their main idea basically when uh, they just said that um, in terms of cheaper goods right for example like they want to achieve a cheaper goods for example because that's very important what they said um, I think firstly this is very la less likely to happen since you know as you see the business owner they are not suddenly lowering the price for example they having a, a demands and a no thank you demands and like um, you know high demands for example so it's less likely for them to just suddenly lower the price but secondly is that what would happen most most likely is that the price would be uh, increasing much more instead of lowering because why because now the demand is higher means that the country they uh, for their Africa they have to make a demand more into the other country of Africa in that continent is Africa which means that the demand is also would be higher and since this Africa's uh, Africa's development is not that good it means that uh, it would not redistribute it properly so but thirdly is that even if it's uh, cheaper we say that uh, they never explain why cheaper are actually good in the very first place, but we say we take that the cheaper means that the resources are actually less valuable. And this is very important because when your resources are actually less valuable, that means that there is no, there is no point in selling that goods, right? So they need to explain why by having a cheaper goods is actually going to benefit the African, considering that Africa needs some money, needs more, more, more money, and when this uh, lesson, why then it, it would be good. Now, the second rebuttal is that when in terms of uh, um, the countries, they have the same intent. And I think they are very overgeneralizing of Africa in it and of it itself, because um, as we know that in Africa, it's a very big country. What does that mean? Firstly, is that a different ideology? No, thank you. Secondly, is that in terms of considering how diverse the African in itself, they basically just don't have the same incentive, right? Because firstly, for some countries, like uh, um, they want to pursue a traditional market, for example, and this is very important since, um, secondly, is that maybe some of them want uh, actually much more progressive. They want to build an economic capacity. So that means those two are clashes. They need to explain why then those things would not backlash each other, which then would hurt the African continent economy in the end of the day. Um, no, thank you. So. Um, um, and, and one of the most important and key points is that even if um, uh, uh, even if they uh, it's it's true, for example, we think that they uh, their incentive is not that important because why? Because they have a different sides. For example, like some continent, and some country in the Africa, they have siding with the U.S. Some of them have a siding with the China, for example, authoritarian regime, for example, or Russia, or etc. That means that not only that those country becoming dependent towards the different sides, which then would lead into a much more backlash in terms of the economy, free uh, trade market, and yeah. Um, uh, so how then you would make this market as actually balanced when those things are different, especially as I would explain. Thirdly is that in terms of distribution of resources, because I think this is also the main idea of the o, uh, of the OO, what we say is that uh, what they never explain to you is that how then imbalance will not occur in the very first place, because we already explained to you the status quo is that there are not imbalance currently. The firstly is that because Africa is a huge continent, and et cetera, et cetera. So that means not only uh, that the likelihood is missing, but we also would want to give uh, uh, the, uh, we, we just want to make an international trade. So uh, now moving on, the uh, uh, OT. What OT missing is that why then if um, the Africa diverse is very, uh, the country is very big, this is uh, very important, especially towards the people within that Africa and within that uh, continent as a government. Uh, no, thank you. So why then it is important since this means that it will hurt the economical growth if they have to build a facility instead of the building the economic capacity. Now, when they do not have any resources at, at all, that means that uh, there is no trade market in the end of the day, right? And secondly, I think when they explain about the ASEAN or OPEC, for example, I think this is also very supporting towards the opening opposition because that means that they're supporting AFTA because that's the same. So we simply do not want to engage with that. 
So yeah, I think that's the entire missing. Now let me just clarify what, uh, why then simply uh, um, uh, the gap between the two countries, uh, no thank you, um, within the Africa, right? Because the status quo right now, there are huge, much economical burden. What's this? Uh, into two different contexts. Uh, firstly, in terms of small countries. Secondly, in terms of big countries. So what happens in small countries? They do not have enough connections. Power as the big countries, for example, means that their impact is how, on how these countries would backlash each other, etc and would be much gap power between that countries, but also for the big countries, I think this is very unjustified because the big countries have the burden to supply all the small country exactly. This is example why the UK exit in becoming Brexit, for example, in using the EU or becoming the European Union, etc. Because simply, firstly, U UK cannot co cope with the supporting continuously within that country. But second of all, the small countries is just very dependent instead of progressing. They do not make any progress. They do not want to international trade, for example. And this is very bad and very unjustified for that big countries. So what do we actually want in our side of the house? We simply is that want uh, into making a free trade, for example, so that this uh, so that these countries are much more likely to work within that country, and we gave them literally freedom for them to uh, working with uh, some of them with uh, India, within Chinese, and etc. And that means that much more uh, balance within those. Uh, economy of distribution because this is very different when the free trade is actually really open those would limit the other country as well since the only country who can control the free trade is not the small countries but the big countries why it works because firstly they're small but they do not have a power to oppose that big country in North Africa second of all they would only utilize the small countries as their pawn which is uh, never explained why then by controlling it is actually fine so because of all of that reason proud to propose thank you Okay. <clears throat> okay. I'll start my speech. Uh, should I start my speech or should I wait? Oh, okay. I'll start my speech in three, two, one. Okay, I think what is lacking in the opening bench is that they didn't simplify what is actually the urgency in this main actor of the motion, right? Before going on to my arguments, I would like to engage in how the OG explained that economic stability will likely happen in their side, which is not true. Maybe just South Africa, but it is not evenly distributed in all African, in the African states, right? In our side, that will actually happen much more better. And how CG explained, um, uh, first of all, CG is very derivative to OG's uh, uh, arguments on how they can obtain cheaper taxes and how it is still okay to depend on China. The problem is when you depend on China too much, this will actually this will actually create more tension within the South African uh, states, right? Now going on how oh, oh let's simplify the main actors in this debate. First, it's the common people within Africa. The main goal in establishing this FTA is to unify trade market and to make it accessible for its members, right? Their setup they really explain on the analysis on why this is the urgency. See, the problem of this of the hunger in most of Africa as well as the conflict within its continent happens because they have they have been in a disadvantage for a long time their long history of slavery right being exploited of their natural resources by other foreign countries which has become very detrimental like you have said how they have become dependent too dependent on China because th because they do not care on what happens to the people of Africa the status quo also shows that a lot of African states still use francs right so they don't have a common currency to proceed trade within the continent which was one of the results of the heavy influence of colonial power in the past and the present. Even if there are states that are developed, like South Africa, that is joint BRICS, in which their goal is to trade technology and resources, there are still a lot of underdeveloped states that has the interest to obtain resources needed for their daily necessities. Therefore, the urgency in this motion is to actually provide these basic necessities by establishing the FTA. Now, going on how this can actually benefit the common people. First of all, again, what the uh, OO has explained, FTA means that no to little uh, taxes, right? It's easier to transport goods. I understand how OG explains that, oh, it's going to be difficult, cont uh, the continent is super big. The problem is they, there has been an economic incentive, yes. 
even if our case is marginal, there are a lot of mechanisms to help these poor countries like IMF. But in order to do that, you, as a result, in or if you're an organization, for example, it's going to be much harder for you because the trickle down effect of you having a significant level of bankruptcy to another country. Okay, here's the thing, though. The again, as I've said, you have economic incentive, right? The local governments in the African states is benefited by doing this FTA. So the point, again, the urgency in this motion is that you want to uh, you want to give the basic necessities to the common people. Again, I understand how you're talking about the transport goods and the roads. If you have economic incentive, the local governments have the ha are obliged to actually create uh, better roads, right? Better transportation. The border and the customs is simplified and standardized. Again, if you have economic incentive, I'm sure the the government will actually oblige to the to what is to what what the common people want, right? So with this, the states in Africa can easily trade within the country. Common people can obtain uh, daily necessities and improve their life. Uh, their livelihood. Again, this will actually create job, job vacancies as well, which will overall create the uh, 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 which will overall create a better economy within them. Because there's an economic in incentive, states within Africa will also repair their politic relations. Again, how uh, engaging how they have tension within their uh, uh, their country, right? In our side, when states are benefited by trade, they will repair their roads so they could so they could trade uh, happen easily, right? This will likely to happen because the local government has the interest to provide stability and the necessities to the people. In our world, again, as I've stated, economic stability will much more happen, uh, which will likely happen to our in our side because the Africa's interest is to maximize their resources rather than in your side. Now, going on how this when this how can this actually create a stronger stronger African Union, right? When the economy uh, in the, within the Africa is stable, the next step is to increase the bar the bargaining power in trade, which will then help uh, with their foreign policy. In the status quo, Africa as a whole is not not the respected because the states is often in conflict again because of the lack of resources because a lot of people are uh, what they have is not is that is unobtainable is unobtainable because of the chances of different currencies because of the barrier barrier and trade right FTA will provide economic interest that will lead to balancing the power among Africa in doing so you can create foreign policies with other countries without the huge disparity of power imbalance because this power because their economy will actually grow stronger, this will be a prerequisite on how to combat influence from China and, for example, Sudan, right? This gradual balance of power is within the interest of the local local and the national government of Africa because for even if in our worst case scenario even if it takes years to do this at the very least it will benefit the common people meanwhile in your side you're only thinking about the resources right you're only thinking oh it's going to be accessible but you're not thinking about the even distribution in the common people in Africa so this will actually fulfill the gro the goal to create a stronger African African Union in the future so the fact that you are pushing the idea that this is only oh it's just going to create easier taxes uh, so that natural resources will be obtainable, it is very idealistic and it will not likely happen because in our side, the government has their own interests, right? Even with their, even in our worst case, worst case scenario, if there's conflict still going on, even if there is FTA, even if there are um, politicians who are corrupted, again, they have the economic incentive. Uh, they are obliged to follow this FTA because they know that this will benefit them as well, right? This can actually lead to how political power in Africa will actually be repaired, right? So the fact that you uh, only think that this will only benefit certain parts of South Africa is very wrong. We believe that by establishing FTA, it is much more, it, it, was, it will actually benefit the common people much more better because one, it the, uh, the, the daily necessities are easily obtained by them, even if it takes a long time in our worst case scenario. But again, because the common people are uh, obtaining these daily necessities, economy will be much more better overall, and the even, distribu uh, even distribution will likely happen in our world. And second of all, in the macro level, they will this will actually create a stronger African Union uh, globally, and therefore they will have the bargaining power whenever they want to do trade internationally. How you said that we are not limiting the, uh, that Africa only have to do trade within their interest. No, they can actually do other uh, FTA with other foreign countries, but the problem is they do not have the bargaining power right now in the status quo. So by focusing internally, you can actually have the stronger uh, bargaining power when you actually uh, confront and when you actually go uh, to do trade to foreign policies. We are proud to oppose. Thank you.
Okay. Before I start my speech, just a second. So this is uh, pens our uh, our you know the farthest step that we could achieve uh, in so far in UDC. We have a ten, and yeah. Uh, so I'm going to start my speech. In three, two, one. I think that all the benches failed to analyze what actually the main necessity of the most African people in uh, in the area. That is not direct investor, for example, who, who suddenly give the mall or be, build infrastructure. They are dying. What they need the most is food in order to just live for tomorrow, for instance, or even a healthcare, for for example. We do not understand why suddenly by uh, by you know redistribute all the natural resources, for example, are suddenly provide all those things. Let's about first. The case of the opening opposition is very. Uh, you know, I don't know. It's very unclear. The only one thing that they rely is that oh, we are going to have more uh, cheap, uh, cheap price, uh, cheaper price. I think that uh, first, this is invalid. My first speaker told you that this is less likely because right now, because you have more market, means that you have more incentive in order to uh, to. In uh, sorry, um, failed to start my timer. It's okay to restart. Uh. Uh. Oh, okay. Uh, means that there will be more demand in your price, uh, in your uh, goods, for instance. Means that you have more incentive in order to uh, uh, higher the price. But second of all, I think that under your side of the house, the the, the one who could who are able in order to uh, lower the uh, who are going to have a lesser price is the only one is the country who has less bargaining power inside of this uh, trade area. But the, but the one who has more power are going to increase the price. So I think I don't think that the, the distribution of power is also ever being explained by the opening government. So but let's talk about the closing opposition. Closing opposition uh, rely on the assumption that the African Union will be even more stronger. Realize that maybe in the South Africa, uh, maybe those countries have a different allies, right? Maybe in the South Africa they rely on open US ever example but in the part of middle east for example which is part of the uh, this continent also has the has the interest in order to depend on china and russia for instance means that there is a very different um, a very different uh, interest in the political in the political and also allies means that the that cooperation is less likely to happen so what i'm going to explain in my speech is very simple why is it this is regrettable how in this uh, how this organization bring more harm than good first of all how in this organization create power uh, create power and balance imbalance the in the decision making realize that as trade or economic organization uh, all the stakeholder has interest to pursue economic profit right realize that the state members are so affairing even even the gap of the economic is so clear there's a country that really rich for oil for instance but uh, but another one with uh, with skyrocketing poverty and, and civil conflict for example what is the impact of this this organization means that the means that there is uh, there is one who become the carrier and the other become the absolute burden like south africa with a relatively richer have absolute moral obligation to share up a ca their capital to the dying member this is exactly what happened in the European Union when the uh, when UK need to carry another uh, European country and exactly what happened in that they are doing brexit because they are dying also why is if, if why this most likely because as now you have engagement and interconnected relation you do not want your members to stay in the crisis because if they are so they fa the, the value of your currency for example is going to be down what is this, why this symbiol symbiosis is bad because when the when when the when the richer country's capacity to assist is lessened means that now you have more poor or dying country inside of this continent this impoverishment country might be have more sustaining capacity to help you in the first place without this fta but because of that bar this additional burden now they are also dying and do not have capacity to help you the likelihood for this is that this poor this poor country in uh, this this country is very poor, right? They are facing structural poverty and also corrupt leader. It is very hard to help them suddenly to develop their in, uh, to, to in their engagement because the resources necessary to do that is a massive amount of money which is limited. Also, consider the fact that this richer, at least richer country, also need that massive amount of money to develop their country, ladies and gentlemen. 
But second of all, let's talk about the, how this power and economic gap also leads to the decision-making imbalance. Most of the rules where to, say, where to send goods, for example, how much price for uh, which products, and etc., etc. Most likely, the one who, co who could control it, those decisions is the one who have more resources and, capa ca and capital or, 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 or whatsoever. That is why cheap prices will only prone to the small power members on their goods, but this big one will have more competitive price in the market. But second of all, the resources distribution is going to be bad under the rest of the house. Realize that the new materi raw material and also minerals are world most demanded material. Opposition say the distribution of natural resources is are going to be better F under FTA. But they never explain to us why distributing natural resources is important. Why it's okay to take the crude oil from Congo, for example, to the other one who need it the most. Because if they because if the exchange of this good, then it is a, uh, is only in terms of goods, for example, or small product, then it is not a worth threat ladies and gentlemen. What will happen in the side of the house is that human and small African countries exploitation sit down. Most likely the oil or the other mineral utilized more um, uh, utilize more by, by the elites in the metropolitan area, but the, but the catastrophe of the environment is hitting the small community inside of that continent. And whenever this country want to speak up or criticize the FTA, they do not have any power not only because they are small, but also because they are bonded by the complex contract. For example, under the side of the house, at the very least, we can ask and receive comp uh, empathy from the international community, for example, because now, under the, side of, under the side of the house, we are seen already, under the side of the house, those countries are seen already being helped by the existence of the FTA. In fact, just utilized in, uh, in order to gain revenue. What, what is the threat of here? Maybe resource resources under our side of the house is going to be least processed or utilized, but that's okay. I already explained to you that, um, that actually the interest of these dying people, uh, for example, Congo or Sudan, is not to... Uh, uh, um, that massive infrastructure. What they need the most is to live tomorrow, for example. How do we gain that? Volunteer, volunteer for example, from PBB every every year send their uh, uh, people, for example. Outside of the house, those things will never exist because most because WTO, for example, will see you as a rifle and 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 see you as a threat, for example. I think that this is very important because most of the uh, uh, that the uh, you know uh, WTO member are the one who could uh, who send their people in order to help in the very first place. But because of they feel threatened by their existence, that is their capacity their willingness is decreased because they have to explain to us why suddenly the facilities they develop could suddenly help those dying people in the end of the day you just utilize them to, ger to generate revenue for example but we but we uh, but we uh, but they never receive the direct advantage let's talk about how the side of the house is going to be better we, ha we have a very different uh, interest right as the uh, political situation for example in western africa they have more allies and etc we are going to focus more on our existence um investor for example or our uh, or our our existence um engagement with uh, uh the separated uh, uh, china for example or america we are very proud to propose <laughs> Test, 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 am I audible, right? Okay. 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 I'm going to start my speech in three, two, one. When Goffwood, Goffwood concede that African nations are corrupt, it is it the whole it is described this contracting the whole government idea that a tax is good and more barriers is good and so on and so forth. Because guess what? In your side of the house, if you give more barriers, if you give more tax, you will get this money will get corrupted. That is exactly what is the problem right now, ladies and gentlemen. More a lot of taxes coming from towards the state budget in the African nations are not being utilized goodly in the current status quo due to corruption that exists that is in your side of the house. There's the reason why all the opposition bench uh, will win the, in this debate because we have tell, told you what is the structural reasons as to why uh, Africans are poor in the very first place. It's not only corruption that you mentioned, but it's also like Western influence and how the scrambling up of Africa that happened in the, in the past, for example, right? I would like to give a characterization on how we are going to be above opening opposition, right? I think opening opposition gave us a uh, clear, clear like, uh, 
idea right about how like they say they, uh, like a lot of different of resources and the resources such as materials and so on and so forth but we say they did not analyze why Africa although have a diverse resources but economically isn't strong enough in the global world right we have give like a structural reasons as to why there is like uh, the, the history behind it about like they say a uh, crime of, of Africa for example or for example like a lot of these African nation are using francs as their currency that cannot make them fiscally and monetary strong for example and also I do have a question for them when they say about China but they didn't uh, about China wrongdoings in the current status quo with the One Belt and One Road Initiative. But they didn't give any process analysis as to why suddenly Chinese wrongdoings will suddenly become decreased or suddenly become out, the, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Because once this free ter trade area is there, uh, we, it, it, it just uh, One Belt and One Road Initiative will still be there in the also, right? Because exactly, a lot of these uh, African countries have contracts with China for hundreds and hundreds of years, such as Djibouti, for example. So, but we have mechanized, right? If 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 the existence of free trade area, it will create a massive trade economic uh, increase, especially like in the GDP, for example. It will neutralize the Chinese influence in the, especially in countries that have like One Belt and One Road Initiative. Therefore, China can cannot be unjust towards towards these particular nations because guess what? These small countries right now have backings of strong African nations, right? So, therefore, as such as the African Union, for so. For example, the economic stronger is the prerequisite of a good foreign policy or a good foreign power, ladies and gentlemen. We also give analysis as to why, what is the impact, have a strong relation. First, I'm going to uh, engage with all the opening government, right? Opening government to you uh, talk about do they don't want free trade because there's already trade with the U.S. and so forth. We say no. This is not, uh, we say no, right? Because of the uh, various geographical barriers and so on and so forth. We say no. This is not the 1900. Africa still have roads, right? With the trade of the free trade area, the legality of customs and approval will be much more easier. Trade with the US, as what the government that have told you, with it's obviously will be much more expensive due to airplane and so forth. But I'm going to give you one additional uh, rebuttals for this. Is that in your side, trade will be difficult, especially during crisis or during like, for example, sometimes Western country give barriers if they want to enter their particular country. There are two things. First, during crisis, especially during COVID or during like, uh, because in Africa, there's a lot of pandemic going on, for example, like malaria and so on and so forth. But secondly, there's also a conflict, right? If this particular country have like a, have a, like a port that is being in with being uh, you know, with China, for example, obviously U.S. doesn't want to trade with them because I have to step in into the into the Chinese uh, Chinese port, for example. But in our side of the house, since there is African Trade Union, obviously it doesn't matter if the port being being with China or not because this is free African free union, for example, right? And also they say about African countries have too much of problems and pri and the priorities are so on and so forward. But we say the problem is due due to the generational economic trauma caused by the West and the dependency too much towards the West in terms of currency, some African countries are you still still using France and so on and so forth, but also in the current status quo about, uh, no thank you, but uh, uh, for example, in the current status quo, like how China debt trap in the other countries create a huge economic problems that translated to kitchen table issues, people are not, cannot go to it and so on and so forth, but African countries itself doesn't want to help other African countries because guess what, due to, free, due to trade barriers, ladies and gentlemen, so we say when you pull out the trade barriers, it's going to be easier for you to transport a, a resource such as, uh, for example, like potatoes, for example, or like food, for example. So the food security will happen better in our side of the house. This is contingent what's his case, case about like uh, Africa being more united because of a strong uh, African trade, un African union in itself, ladies and gentlemen. And also come towards their, their point about like, for example, tax is important and strengthened in the economy and so on and so forth. Okay, assuming but not conceding, for example, yes, tax might be decreased in your side of the house, but I've told you about corruption, right? But we say there is a trade off. Even if tax revenue you will decrease, but the, but if there is more trade, obviously the GDP of that particular country, especially underdeveloped country, will definitely increase, right? Obviously, it will give economic benefits and uh, for the common people because the number of production will increase. What will what will be this? Uh, what is the incentive of the GDP increase? If the GDP increase, obviously the the tariffs of the of that particular country, like for example, will be higher, right? This particular country can from underdeveloped can they can be developing? Yes, OG.
I, uh, we say that even though also it's competitive, but it can also be competitive in your side of the house too. For and it's much more competitive because it's not within African nations, but it is around the world, right? For example, Russia and uh, Russia and US want to like trade with uh, with Africa, and what? Guess what? They can make just proxy. Just, if you don't want to trade with the US, I'm going to support the Sudanese the Sudanese uh, left front, for example. If I want to, if so, for example, if you are creating a proxy war, ladies and gentlemen. So therefore, in our side of the house, will be better because it is within the African. Trade Union in itself, right? And also, come to my last point about CG. I don't think that CG, I think that CG is very, very much derivative to uh, OG, right? But we say when government pointed out to you that there are two structural problems: poverty and hunger. We have explained to you, right? Government bench have analyzed due to uh, due, opposition bench have analyzed that this particular problem causes due to in your side of the house due to too much independence on China and the West, ladies and gentlemen. And also, they are talking to you about uh, have less power, like big countries, like. There will be like an EU, like Brexit and so forth. But we say this is free trade, free trade area. Country aren't obliged to have monetary or fiscal power or immigration power towards other country, right? EU, EU, for example, why we have to analyze why why Britain come uh, to. Brexit, for example, because it is due to too much of immigration, right? It's not going to be happening in our side of the house because this is free trade area. This is not multilateral organization like uh, like the EU, right? It's a different case. Cooperation of small countries and big countries, right? This is linked back to Siska argument about benefits about free trade and relations within the within the African community. So we say it's in order to create a very strong African community, you need to have a strong of identity between the economic and itself, and therefore the, the, there will be like a decrease on the African. Uh, African fighting over each other, we are very proud to oppose.